Welcome to the Almond of the Lumion tutorial series. Remember to click the subscribe button to receive the most recent updates on all of our videos. The fourth tutorial in the series will go over how to use Lumion to bring your 3D landscape designs to life. We'll go through various projects as we go, and we'll talk about the tools available in Lumion to help us build a beautiful landscape. Under the, la under the landscape tab, you'll find a variety of tools such as height, water, ocean, paint, open street map, and grass. We'll go over how to use them one by one. We can change the shape of the terrain using the height tool. Let's take a look at how to make some mountains in the background of this scene in this example. Let's start by increasing the height of your view. This will make it easier for us to assess the landscape and construct the mountain. Using the sliders, we can also change the size and speed of the brush. The radius of the terrain that you are editing is determined by the yellow color circle. To make a mountain, we can use the following tools. Raise, to increase the height of the terrain. Lower, to decrease the height of the terrain. Flatten, to make the surface of the terrain flat. Jitter, to make the surface of the terrain uneven. And smooth, to make the surface of the terrain smoother. You're currently seeing the results of my changes to the terrain's shape. I'll show you how to make water in Lumion. Vegetation can be seen on both sides of the terrain in this scene. I'm going to make a lake that runs through the vegetation. To begin, we'll use the height tool to lower the terrain. When we're finished, click the water button. Make sure the place object button is turned on, then click on the terrain to place the water plane. Expand the water plane by dragging on the circle until it covers the entire region of the terrain where you want the lake to be. To change the height of the water plane, use the up and down buttons. Click on the choose water type option to change the appearance of the lake. There are six options available. Ocean, tropical, pond, mountain, dirt, and ice. By clicking on the Ocean button, we can also make water. To turn it on, press the On-Off button. In this scene, an ocean is created in an instant. To change the appearance of the ocean, we have four sliders. Wave intensity, turbidity, height, and brightness. The color of the ocean can also be easily changed by using the various options available here. The paint tool will allow us to change the texture of your terrain's surface. The four boxes under the paint option allow you to assign different texture types. The first box is for selecting the texture you want to use for your landscape grass. Double click on the texture box to open the landscape textures library. You can choose from 42 different textures. To use your own texture, click on the custom button to reveal both color and normal map options. You can use these two buttons to import your own textures in. You can control the size and speed of your brush by using two sliders. To apply the texture, drag your mouse across the surface. Several landscape presets are also available to help you decide on the overall look of your landscape. You can assign two types of grass to your scene, 3D grass material and landscape grass. 3D grass materials are extremely detailed, which has a significant impact on rendering speed. Landscape grass, on the other hand, is faster to render and should be the default for large areas of grassland or areas that are far from your camera's view. To include landscape grass in your scene, toggle the on-off switch under the landscape grass option. To change the appearance of the landscape grass, use the sliders for grass size, grass height, and grass wildness. We can also add flowers, stones, and other elements to the landscape to make it more realistic. 
Click on the Change Scatter Object icon located at the top right corner of the object boxes to open the Scatter Objects library, and select the object that you desire. To control the appearance of the objects, use the corresponding three sliders. Spread, Size, and Random Size. You may place up to eight different objects on your landscape. The final section of today's tutorial will focus on OpenStreetMap. This enables us to integrate elevation data and satellite imagery into your scene to provide rapid in-context and master plan content. This feature also allows us to import simple 3D shapes of buildings, roads, water, green spaces, and transit infrastructure. It can quickly add an entire suburb or city to your visualization. To enable OpenStreetMap, click the on-off button under the Landscape tab. This feature requires an internet connection to function. By clicking on the Pick GPS Coordinates button, we can now select the data that needs to be imported into our scene. In the resulting window, you can either type the name of the location you want to use for your scene into the search bar, click anywhere on the map, or move the GPS coordinate pin. Adjust the radius of the OpenStreetMap area that will be downloaded to your scene by dragging the OSM range slider. The circle denotes the area of OpenStreetMap that will be downloaded. The camera position in your Lumion scene is represented by the triangular blue arrow. The red marker corresponds to the origin in Lumion. To include elevation data and satellite imagery for your landscape, toggle on both the height maps and satellite maps buttons. To download the selected area into your scene, click the Start OSM Download button. You can make elements such as water, earth, buildings, land use, and roads invisible. To adjust and randomize the height of your buildings, use the Building Minimal Height and Randomize Building Height sliders. To show or hide individual buildings, click the Toggle Building Visibility button and select the building to show or hide. There are several presets available to give the OpenStreetMap model a different look. This concludes the fourth installment of the Lumion tutorial series. By subscribing to our channel, you can keep an eye out for our next video. We'll see you in the next tutorial.